football segment. A football only segment. And that starts with Miami has named De'Eric King its starting quarterback for the 2020 season. This is the same De'Eric King who passed for 167 yards against an OU defense. They gave up 532 yards passing against LSU in the Peach Bowl. To say nothing of 282 yards passing against Iowa State with five touchdowns. But I'm going to get to that because the good news for Oklahoma is with the announcement that Oklahoma and Missouri State have been granted an NCAA waiver to play their game a week earlier than scheduled, there comes more good news. Junior college transfer Justin Harrington is expected to arrive on campus in Norman on Monday. The welcome development means defense coordinator Alex Grinch will have his full assortment of signed defensive backs available to him at the start of camp for the first time in a calendar year. And Harrington might be the difference between earning a fifth straight tri uh, fifth trip in six years to the college football playoff and not. Along with junior redshirt junior Trey Norwood, Harrington, a safety, can help bolster the speed D secondary that became the primary issue in the Sooner 63-28 to loss, of course, in the college football playoff semifinal. Not only did Grinch and OU learn just how crucial players like defensive end Ronnie Perkins, who was el ineligible due to suspension that game, were to the defense's success, but that the Sooners lacked depth at the critical nickel safety and strong safety positions. In games where the Sooner defense played well, particularly in the Red River rivalry against Texas, brilliant safety play led the way. Free safety Patrick Fields, Tulsa's own, and strong safety DeLaren Turner-Yale were each among the Sooners' top three leading tacklers against UT. Turner-Yale, trouble. Notched 10 tackles, including nine solo tackles and a tackle for loss in that game. Fields tied cornerback Trey Brown for the second most tackles against then number 11 Texas with seven, including one of nine sacks of quarterback Sam Ellinger. Oklahoma notched a dizzying 15 tackles for loss against the Longhorns in that game. For Grinch, a self proclaimed tackle for loss zealot, the dominating display by the OU defense in the 34-27 win is an example of what the speed D can be against a top 25 opponent. Just weeks later against unranked Iowa State, however, the Sooners gave up again 282 yards passing to quarterback Brock Purdy and five passing touchdowns. With running back Brees Hall accounting for 110 yards on 18 carries, the five and four Cyclones then were a failed two-point conversion from beating Oklahoma. The 42-41 win against Iowa State was the second straight week when OU gave up at least 41 points. Following that game, OU's defense had seemingly righted itself, giving up no more than 31 points in its final four games, leading up to the Peach Bowl against, of course, number one ranked LSU. The bottom didn't so much as fall out as it was ripped asunder by Joe Burrow and the LSU Tigers offense that put up a total of 692 yards. The most notable damage dealer, not to be used with a death dealer, to the OU defense was first round pick Justin Jefferson. Jefferson led all receivers with 14 catches for 227 yards with four touchdowns. Matter of fact, I take it back. He is a death dealer. Most of his yardage came against former four-star and number one player in the state, Oklahoma, Justin Broyles. While Broyles led the team in tackles with 11 in that game, the more telling fact is true freshman Woody Washington ranked second for OU with 10. Neither of those players was projected to play safety as a recruit. Yet, like Brendan Radley Hiles, Washington and Broyles have been thrust into the nickel and strong safety positions as Grinch continued to find depth at the position he personally coaches and understands to be critical to his scheme success. Now, with Harrington, redshirt freshman Jeremiah Crudell, true freshman Bryson Washington, and Norwood, Grinch ought to have the players he needs at his disposal to create depth against a class opponent like LSU, where there was none. And from there, we take a look at what pass rush is compared to pass defense. Pass defense being the work of the secondary, pass rush being the work of the 
defensive line front seven. You can get pressure on a quarterback if he is standing back there giving you time to get pressure on him as a quarterback. You cannot get pressure on a quarterback if it is quick throws, quick game, as Alex Grinch would call it. If the goal is to get the ball out of the quarterback's hands as quickly as possible on swing routes, bubble routes, hitches, slants, it doesn't matter how good you are with your pass rush. It only matters how good you are with your pass defense, which means you need to have secondary players that can do what Brendan Radley House did against Texas Christian to seal the win, which is to be able to diagnose a late throw or late recognition by a quarterback like Max Duggan and leap in front of the catcher, pass catcher, and the ball and make a play. That's what you need. Now, I have been very critical of both Grinch and former defensive coordinator Mike Stoops for how they choose to use players who were evaluated and recruited as cornerbacks. I don't think it's a coincidence that Jane Davis had a great year last year, all things considered, because he was allowed to play corner and not forced to play nickel. Radley Hiles has never played corner at Oklahoma, though he was a five-star at that position. Yes, you do not have the depth that you want at nickel, so recruit Nichols, recruit safeties that can play that position. Now, with Justin Harrington at 6'3", 215 pounds, he might be in the box. He might be at nickel. It's all going to be dependent on how good he is at knowing his leverages and how good of shape he is in regard to how good shape the rest of that defense is. Trey Norwood probably could do the job. I think that Jeremiah Cordell has the goods. Bryson Washington could fit into there. I'm not even opposed to Radley Hiles, Woody Washington, or Justin Broyles continuing to play nickel. I am opposed to throwing them in these positions where they're probably not that good. If they prove to be that good, so be it. Great. Awesome. But if they're not that good, stop trying to force a square peg in a round hole. It's not rocket science. And at this point for Oklahoma, I don't give a good damn about whether or not they're going to win a Big 12 championship. I don't even care that they make it through the regular season with one loss. I care that they make the college football playoff and they win a freaking semifinal game. And the one thing that we have been able to say about every trip that Oklahoma has had to the college football playoff is that the defense has sucked. That's what Alex Grinch is supposed to be here to fix. That's what Alex Grinch's speed D is supposed to be about. And now as I continue to tell you the news as it relates to 2021 recruiting, Alabama was ranked 55th in the country in recruiting in April. They had one commitment in the boat in Deontay Lawson. They had just lost their only quarterback commit, Drake May, in a flip to North Carolina. Since then, Nick Saban has set fire to the recruiting trail and rained hellfire and brimstone on all of those, including me, who doubted him. In this month alone, he has picked up a four-star weak side defensive end. He has picked up a five-star offensive tackle. He has picked up a four-star center. He has picked up a four-star guard, and he picked up a five-star defensive tackle. You want to know where college football playoff national championships are going? Pay attention to the offensive line and defensive line recruiting and then get a little bit more nuanced and narrow and look at the offensive tackle recruiting, as in those guys that stop pass rush, and the defensive tackle recruiting, as in those guys that cave in the center of your offensive line. And I'll show you who's winning a national championship. Now show me Oklahoma's recruiting class and show me the five-star defensive tackle. Show me the five-star offensive tackle. And I will show you what is waiting for Oklahoma's future. It's not rocket science. I need my Jimmies to be better than their Joes. I don't care what scheme you're running. I don't care who the coaches are. I need better players than they have. 
Players win championships.